Ugh. Hi everyone, Pinkthony Shades Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Yule album, Soft Scars. This is a brand new LP, the third commercial LP, in fact, from singer, producer, songwriter Nat Shamil, who I wouldn't just call a musician or musical artist, but also an auteur, because with their previous full-length album last year, they formulated not just a sound, but a persona, as well as a sad, isolated digital world for that persona to sulk in. This record was packed with wondrous ambient pop that certainly lived up to the title Glitch Princess, and there was a top comment on my review for the project that uh, grabbed my attention and I had to uh, <laughs> read here. This is what Grimes thinks she's doing but actually isn't, which, to an extent, I have to agree. Even if some of the songs on this LP were a bit too faint for my liking. Regardless, I walked away from this album impressed with its consistency, its conceptuality, and going forward I was curious to see if Nat would be able to deepen and expand the world they created on this record, and possibly pair it with some bolder songwriting, which I would say there was hope for on Soft Scars given that at least a few of the singles headed in more of an indie rock and shoegaze direction. And for sure the rest of the record does pretty much follow through with that genre switch, but I can't help but feel like something has been lost in the process of leaning more into these other genres. This project once had a sound that was an eerie and accurate depiction of the digital dystopia we currently live in, which was a big part of what made Nat's artistic world so unique, and now I feel like that's completely gone on lead singles like Sulky Baby, which is essentially boilerplate 90s rock nostalgia with a slight shoegaze twist, and for sure it's listenable, but it doesn't feel feel remotely post-human, even though Nat is still very much pushing that angle in their lyrics, like on the opener where we get lyrics like Water Me Till I Wither, 404 Error, that I think sounds slightly out of place against these loose but kind of pounding drums, these harsh distortion walls, not to mention the indiscriminate yelling all over the track that sounds like a Nickelodeon cartoon character from decades ago having a meltdown. It's for sure fiery in the weepy string breaks uh, on the track or a nice touch too, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I find it at least a little grating. So I don't think this record has a super strong start, honestly, but things do improve as Nat finds ways to uh, subtly work more electronics and glitches into these noise pop and shoegaze blends, while also bringing lyrics that feel like the AI-inspired character uh, they sing from the standpoint of is experiencing love and heartbreak for the first time. We have desire and depression and jealousy all put on display throughout numerous tracks here and put sometimes in a very childish and naive way. My first favorite track on the record to do this is the song For You, I Won Too, which has some really cool sound play between the super saturated droning tones and warped off-kilter guitar melodies. I love the way the vocals glitch out a bit on the hook as well as Nat is saying, I want to for you, for you, I want to, in a way that feels like their vocals are being chopped up and sampled and played back again and again. Then I'm pretty enamored with the track Ghosts as well, which is a acoustic, but the vocals are touched up in a way where, once again, we do have kind of like a an inhuman quality to them, but the performance still remains beautiful and touching. Though the lyrics are pretty unsettling as Nat claims insanity and uh, certainly reads like it too, I feel like I'm listening to the ramblings of some kind of like app-generated AI girlfriend who is malfunctioning due to a virus, with some pretty haunting refrains at the very end saying, if only I could be real enough to love. The track Daisy successfully and impressively recaptures some of those classic My Bloody Valentine vibes in those heavy crushing walls of guitar distortion as well as the uh, humming guitar leads that soar over them. We have another touched up robot vocal and acoustic guitar combo going on in the verses, which eventually devolves into this very slow, crushing passage of screams on top of heavy guitars, on top of punchy drums, on top of dejected lyrics. Lyrics that further show this record's spiraling into feelings of disassociation and going crazy over love. It's at around this point on the record that we get Fish in the Pool, which is a pretty little piano interlude, I suppose, to give us a breather of some sort. And from this point, the last leg of the record is a bit mixed. Software update, I thought, was an interesting moment where we do get uh, something very raw and intimate. It is a quiet guitar ballad with a super clean electric tone, a bit of a sway to the uh, way the strumming is going on. The performance overall is decent, but the ending does just kind of cut out randomly, and the lyrics occasionally do feel very on the nose. And that is not the only track I would say that about in the last leg of this record. The close 
Scherzer is kind of guilty of that too. A song that also comes to a very pitiful crescendo point in the second half. The instrumentation pumping up and the vocals coming off in this like very pained way just does not really land in the way that I think Nat thinks it may. But at least the song Inferno does switch things up a little bit by bringing some uh, moody electro pop to the table with some subtle bass and kicks that uh, I feel like they could back an EDM anthem were they to be turned up a bit. The song structure could have also used some building out too. Then there's also Blood Bunny, which is one of the few tracks on this thing that actually dabbles directly in that ambient pop sound that uh, made Glitch Princess what it was. It's creepy, it's unique, it has a strong sense of place, and hopefully this is not the last time we hear Nat uh, toying with these types of sounds and vibes. My favorite track on the back end of this record, though, has to be the song Cyber Meat, which is an electronic pop-punk fusion that that is handily the catchiest and most visceral song on the entire record, and even ends up rocking way harder than the much louder intro track. Overall, I'll say I think Soft Scars is a pretty good alternative pop and shoegaze project, though some of the songwriting here and there is a little scant, it's a little style over substance, and I think Yule has lost the narrative a little bit aesthetically in transitioning toward more of a rock-centric sound. Still, I do enjoy a lot of the songs on this thing, and there wasn't a single track that stuck out to me as being overtly bad. At worst, this record just kind of leaves me wanting more, which, for better or for worse, does have me sitting on the edge of my seat wondering what the next Yule album is going to sound like. So, I guess you could say I'm still intrigued. I'm feeling a light seven on this one. Tran. Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, you will forever.